Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, trader for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today we've got a new education item that I'm excited to show off. Someone who's now a good friend of mine, Dr. Oleg Sepunkov, who uh, is something of an expert in traditional artillery systems and also does 3D modeling and 3D printing, made the museum a 16-inch shell replica. It comes apart into all the components. And that's what really makes it a great educational tool for the museum. Uh, so let's talk about some of the components of the armor-piercing shell. First off, we've got the powder bag. Uh, you, you've got the powder bag itself, which is white here. And this represents one of the powder bags from the, ends of the end of the ship's career. It's got the red patch on the back with the, the quilted pattern. So each of these would be filled with a little bit of black powder. So that when the primer fires into them, it detonates the black powder, which is more likely to go off than the nitrocellulose cordite grains in here that, that are that they're big. Actually, he printed us off, off some replica grains here. They are three inches tall, roughly on average half inch wide and each one has seven holes in it so that it burns more efficiently. So th those would be stacked up in here lengthwise by and large and then if it wasn't at 110 pounds of weight they would have laid a couple more uh, flat on top essentially that's called the tear layer but not all the powder bags had it. But this one's also cool because you can see it is laced up like this. The powder bags that we previously had on display, which are just concrete with uh, canvas wrapped around them and painted to look like powder bags, uh, don't show this. In the 1980s, they add uh, what's called Swedish additive, and it's essentially a pouch that's laced on around the existing powder bag, and uh, it's basically Teflon. So when the powder explodes, it atomizes the Teflon and that coats the inside of the barrel and prevents the gases and the shell moving through the barrel from eroding it as badly, uh, which functionally extends the life of the barrel uh, to greater than the life of the ship instead of having to replace it every 300 shots. So, gave us this powder bag that shows all of those features. And then the shell. So this is an armor piercing shell. Most of the real shells that we have here are high capacity shells. They're the five foot tall kind. Uh, and, and there's, we may have one or two armor piercing shells, but they're completely intact. We, we certainly don't have all that much. Uh, so having something like this is really great. So first off, we've got these two pieces, which actually thread into the bottom of the shell. This is the shape of the cavity that's inside the shell. Uh, and this would be the burster charge. It's about 33 and a half pounds of Composition D plastic explosive. When the fuse goes off, this is what detonates and turns this part of the shell body where the cavity is on the inside into shrapnel, which is then gonna spread through the compartments on the ship and that's what's actually doing the damage. And there's also here the base plug which is how you access the cavity inside the shell for the burster charge, and where the fuse is for the armor-piercing shell. American armor-piercing shells tend to have a 0 .035 second time delay fuse. They will travel about 80 feet before the projectile detonates. Now, for most battleship-sized targets, like New Jersey, we're 108 feet wide, so that's plenty of room for the shell to punch through the armor, get into the squishy part of the ship, and then detonate. And keep in mind, as this is punching through objects, it's actually slowing down, so it won't even go that far. It's designed to get it through the armor and then explode inside the ship. And now we've got ways to represent that. So, next piece you have, of course, is the shell body itself. And you can see he was able to print this in uh, four sections. So you got your brass base ring and everything else. Uh, I've been meaning to paint this up to look accurate, I just haven't gotten a chance to yet. Um, but again, th this is the bullet part of the projectile. It's where the burster charge is, it's where the fuse is. This is the, the main shell body and everything else is sort of added on top of or inside of it. So next up is the piece that makes this an armor piercing shell. And that's this thing, this is the nose cap. That's also what makes it a super heavy shell 
uh, because it's so dense and heavy that it adds a lot of extra weight to this projectile. So the armor piercing nose cap is what is designed to brute force its way through a target's armored belt or reinforced concrete of a bunker or something like that. And, and this can punch through something like 18 inches of armor plate at uh, near point blank ranges. It can punch through something like 30 feet of reinforced concrete at near point blank ranges. Of course, the, the greater out you extend the range, the smaller that becomes, but it, it can still punch through battleship grade armor at most ranges. Uh, and that's all thanks to this nose cap. And this nose cap is kind of being destroyed as it is punching its way through the armor. So as it hits, this is breaking apart, but also breaking apart the armor. And so at a certain point, the projectile is all that's tumbling through the inside of the ship. And then finally, we have the nose cone here. And the nose cone is just a real thin, light piece of sheet metal uh, that is designed to break apart once it hits a target. But it, it's explicitly there to make the projectile aerodynamic. So as it's flying through the air, it's good and aerodynamic. It's not this blunt bullet. It's not this blunt uh, nose cap. It's, it's able to push through the air efficiently. And then as soon as it hits anything, water, uh, the, the shell plating of a ship, anything like that, this will crumple and break away immediately. And so you're left with the armor piercing nose cap that can then punch through anything subsequent that it hits. Uh, this is pretty efficient because it is both relatively blunt, but also goes down a, a good distance like this because once it hits a target, it's going to start to tumble. And so this is still going to be impacting the steel even as the projectile starts to tumble. Uh, but here, is a really great breakaway illustration of how the 16-inch shells work. 3D printers have a lot of potential for museum ship restoration uh, and museum education. What's something you'd like to see a 3D replica of in the future that you think would either help make the ship complete or be used as a good education tool? We've already used a large 3D printer to replicate the bell of BB-16, the first New Jersey, for an exhibit we did. Um, but the, that and this is really the only two large-scale 3D printing projects that we've done so far. Let us know what interests you in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves who really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below for ways you can donate to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching. He came for one of the dry dock tours and said, I 3D printed a 16 inch shell for you. Uh, will you accept it for the museum? And I was like, oh yeah, I've seen, I've seen the, the 3D files of like the one six scale 16 inch shells. They're a couple inches. To, great, yeah, pull it out of your pocket. I, sure, I'll take it. Cool. Uh, and he's like, oh, I just have to go back to my car to get him. Like, Ugh. He didn't even put it in his pocket. And the man comes back from his car. He's driven all the way from Chicago with this thing in his car, and it is a full size, six foot long, 3D printed 16 inch shell. You can see it in pieces here behind me, but he pulls it out all in one piece. He's carrying this 50 pound plastic thing over his shoulder through the parking lot. I'm like, holy cow, that's kind of overboard. Like, thanks, that's cool. Uh, I'll put it in the turret with the other, with the fiberglass shells we have, and like now we've got one more shell. Great. And he was like, it comes apart into all the components. And that's what really makes it a great educational tool for the museum.